Happy Monday, you all. How are you all doing? This is your girl, Shan. I hope and pray that you all set your clocks back an hour on yesterday. I do ask that you forgive me for my bit of tardiness, but I'm going to jump into today's love topic, okay? But you know, I cannot do that without reminding y'all about our show tonight on Marriage Mondays with the Kings. So we're going to start like a little series that we're going to do once a month. And when we do this series, we're going to do it live, okay? And so it's going to be titled, The Two Become One. And we're going to get into some really deep topics. Today at 7 p.m. Central, St Central Standard Time on KRG and 98.5 FM, we are going to be talking about divorce. So we're going to have special guests tonight. That is going to be Shirley Latour and Rochelle Johnson. And my husband is also going to be one of the panelists because a lot of people say, you know, we like to hear from the men and this, that, and other. So we'll have two young ladies and one young man, my husband, and we're going to talk about divorce. And I'm going to be interviewing them about divorce and different things like that. So we hope and pray that you all can join us. Now, guess what? Join us live from our Marriage Mondays with the Kings YouTube page. So we will be going live from our YouTube because a lot of times people say, well, we want to see y'all. Okay, join us live. And what that means you have to do is go to your YouTube subscribe to our Marriage Mondays with the Kings and click the little notification bell and then you'll see when we go hot as we say in the military. So this is what I'm going to talk about today, right? I need people to consider this when it comes to marriage. Married couples do not owe you anything, okay? I'm just going to keep it real. Married couples do not owe you anything. I know y'all like, Shan, where y'all going today? Just stay with me, right? Now, this is one thing that I'm going to say that I've noticed when it comes to those who are married. You have one whether it be the husband or the wife, that'll give away the whole house. You got the other one that'll say, hold on now, we need to think about this and whatever the case may be. Now, in this situation, when you have the husband and the wife that's like this, generally, because I'm speak from my experience, when I would want to help people and then my husband be like, hold on, hold on now, we got to think about this. I would just give away the whole business. I would just pick up strangers on the side of the road because, oh, they needed help or whatever the case may be. But I was not using wisdom. And my husband, good morning, Dalish, was just trying to tell me, baby, use wisdom. If you look, look at a married couple, one person to give away the whole house and the other one will be like, hold on, we need to think about it. That is not a bad thing when it comes to marriage. And this is why I share this with you, because that's the balance that God has between the both of you all. I used to get so mad at my husband and I'm going somewhere with this, but I used to get so mad at my husband because I'd be like, baby, what so and so need da, 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 da. I wasn't even considering what we needed in our own home. I was that type. And don't get me wrong. My husband will help people and he'll give away his food and all kind of stuff like that. But that's what balanced us out as husband and wife. And so I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. What I learned to do is I learned to talk to my husband first. Now, I know these little memes be going around on social media. And I heard a lot of people say, oh, you being controlled. If you always got to say you got to run back and talk to your wife or run back and talk to your husband. No, that is not control. And if anybody ever tell you that that is the enemy. OK, because when you the two become one and you've worked as the word of God said to become one, that is not control. That is wisdom. And let me tell you why I'm going to give a good old country example. Now, the reason why I said married couples do not owe you anything, because this is when as I'm constantly thinking and I um constantly think, God, what is breaking up marriages? You know, what is some of the things? And I'm telling you, when it comes to finances, that's one of the biggest things because there is always someone, and I never get this. I'm just going to speak in general. I'm going to generalize this. There is always someone that's out to take something from somebody else, okay? There is always someone that is out to take something from someone else, and they don't care what you're going through in your life. They don't care how many kids you got. They don't care how many jobs you have trying to feed your children. There is always someone. Yes, the Word of God says that we are to give. We are to love and everything like that, but the Word of God also says that we are to use wisdom. Now, Husband and wife, if you have agreed when you got married, say, you know, the mom, she has uh, the wife, she has a mom or whatever. And, you know, she just gives a little bit, hun, her brothers and sisters gives a little bit to take care of their mom. OK, that's understandable. You know, that's a discussion that you have going in and whatever the case may be. But what burns me up is when you have number one. Back in the old days, when it came to marriage, back in the Bible days, if you do research and you go back in the Bible days, um, generally a young lady, she left her father's house. You know, the young man was prepared to take her in and provide for her and whatever the case may be. But see, what is going on today is you got so many, so many people with the spirit of take. 
You got so many people. They do not care what you are going through. This is what I'm going to ask you. Because guess what? Your family members may feel like they can't ask you without getting into an argument. Y'all just share this video because I tell them like a T.I. is. I mean, I don't know them. But this is what irritates me. When you have an individual who is fully capable and able to get up off your backside, as the old folks used to say, and you can go out and make you a living in a day, but you choose not to do that. You choose to sit at home, eating somebody's free food, sucking up their free air and whatever the case may be. And then you think that they owe you. Okay, look here. The word of God also says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. You thought as a child, but when you became a man, you put away childish things. And there are too many people who are grown, but you're still acting like little kids. Stop taking from people's marriages, okay? Stop taking people's finances when they have families, when you are fully capable and able. I cannot stand to see somebody who use somebody else like their personal ATM. You go out and you spend all your money. You go and turn up. You go on vacation. You're going to do all these things, and then when it's time to pay your bills and be a responsible adult that we are supposed to be, then you're going to somebody, and you're trying to borrow money from them. And if they tell you they can't give it to you, then you get mad at them. Look, the two become one. So let me, let me, let me share with you. <laughs> Let me share with you something that I had to learn in my marriage. I had to learn to run things past my husband and my husband will run things past me. We will pray and seek God because guess what? What I've learned also is if God did not tell you to do a thing, don't get mad at the person when you trust in them by their word, but then they don't do what they say. Because the word of God also says, if you teach a man, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. And I don't know what's going on in these generations and in our days or whatever the case may be, but you got too many people who are not trying to learn to do things to take care of themselves. And what they do is they go run to somebody else. Now, how does this become a problem? When it comes to the husband and the wife and their marriage, it becomes a problem when you're not able to take care of your household. Okay, so the video that I spoke on last week, I came from the scripture that says you're supposed to take care of your household first. Because all the time growing up in a church, I used to hear the people say, the pastor say, you're supposed to take care of home or you're supposed to take care of your Jerusalem and everything like that. And I never could understand because I never really dug into the scripture to see it for myself. But I spoke about that last week. How many are taking care of your home? That's why husbands and wives start to fight because you got somebody, I'm going, somebody in the family, whether it be an auntie, a mama, a daddy, or somebody, they see you doing good and they feel like that you are obligated to take care of them when most of them are physically able to take care of themselves. Let me share something with you. My mother-in-law has never come to me and my husband for anything. My mama has never came to me and my husband for anything. To this day, both of these ladies are working. My mother-in-law is 75 years old, honey, and she gets up and she goes to work every day so she can make sure that she is sustained. And so I don't understand why it is that people feel when you see a husband and a wife that's doing good, you feel that they are obligated to take care of you. They are obligated to bail you out your mess when the word of God God says we should be faithful over a few things. We should be faithful over the little and God will bless us with much. And see, God is not blessing us with much because a lot of us is not being faithful over the little things. Somebody go and get a new purse. Girl, I had to go get me a new purse. Somebody go to a concert. Girl, I had to go to a concert. Somebody go on vacation. Uh, Then the dude trying to go on vacation. If somebody go get some new J's, you feel like you got to run out and get some new J's. But are you being faithful over the little? So this is something that irritates my soul like none other. When God allows a husband and a wife, especially a husband and a wife that comes in and they they come together as one and they're working hard the way that the word of God says, when God, good morning, Sheree, when God allows the husband and the wife to come in and work as one and you see them doing good, that does not automatically mean that you're supposed to take from them and you're supposed to get in and you're supposed to get some of that. No, husbands and wives learn how to work together as one, okay? Learn how to balance each other out. My husband saying, hold up, swole up. We had a business. Baby, all somebody had to do when we had our business is come in and tell a sob story to me. And I was like, oh my God, okay, you want to throw your baby a party? Okay, you can have our business from this time to this time. Just make sure you clean up after your and my husband's like, okay, because he's he's a business major. So he's like, okay, well, where's the where's the contract at? Huh? 
What you mean where, baby, you didn't have them sign a contract? And it wasn't so much about the money piece of it. It was the liability piece of it. Because God forbid somebody got hurt in our business, then guess who they can sue? They can sue us. I didn't think about that. I was just listening to the side story. And, and it came to a point where if anybody wanted to book the studio we had for any one of their events, guess what? They had to sign a contract with my husband. Because I realized I was not strong enough to stick to business. I was allowing them to sell me a sob story they talking about they can't pay for this that and the other and then you look up on their social media and they on a cruise how many of y'all and you're like wait a minute how you didn't have no money for your baby party but you had money for a cruise some of y'all sitting up and shaking your head right now as we speak because somebody that came to you and gave a whole sob story oh my refrigerator stopped working you done went and bought, bought them a whole ice box as we say in the country you done bought them a whole ice box and then you turn around and they going on vacation and you like hold up you haven't paid me back my money. Is that my money you use for vacation? That's why God tells us to use wisdom. And so when my husband would say, you know what, baby? Uh-uh. He said, no. My husband said, no. That's the first thing that I would say. Hey, how you doing, Leslie? That's the first thing. My husband said, no, I'm sorry. We can't help you. Because guess what? A lot of times, and God told me this, and I spoke about this a little bit before, we try to be the savior for everybody else. And then we get mad when we get in a situation and nobody's there to save us. But when you operate in the will of God, when you seek ye first, Matthew 6 and 33, one of my favorite scriptures, when you seek ye first, God, and you go in prayer, because some people say, you know what, I got to pray about it. And then you got people that got the audacity to get mad, like, what you mean you got to pray about it? Why can't you just let me hold $50? I told you I'll pay you back when I get paid. What? what? Why are you getting defensive with me about my coins? That's why one of the big things that tears up marriages. So if you all didn't have agreement coming into marriage about how y'all gonna do with y'all money, see, I mean, I ain't knocking no shade, but me and my husband's money is one. The word of God say the two become one. Our monies are one. We own all accounts for everything. It's no secret of nothing. We just don't operate like that because the enemy ain't going to come in and I ain't got time to be sitting up here being mad about my coins. You see what I'm saying? But it irritates me. And I want people to know, to consider the fact that you can't always leech out for people that are married just because they looking like they making it. You need to consider this. They got a whole mortgage they got to pay. Okay, they got bills they got to pay just like you. They have children that they need to take care of and put through college just like you. You know what I'm saying? They have to do the same things that you have to do. So what I'm saying is if you are able-bodied to get your, if you able-bodied to ask me for some money, you able-bodied to get your behind up and go get a job and work. I understand things maybe, but guess what? You can't let your pride keep you from taking something, a job that's going to sustain you. But going to people every month and you ask them on the first very month yeah girl my mortgage is gonna be short i was just wondering you know if i could just hold five hundred dollars and then i get it back to you whatever and you know you don't have no intentions of giving it back and then we set up her and we wonder why it is that we go through things in our life but as as we used to say growing up your word is your bond your word is everything if you say you're gonna do it you need to do it but what you not need to do what you do not need to do is go and leech off of somebody else i have learned since i stopped allowing people to use us i allowed that my husband didn't allow people to use us as an atm i allowed that and once i start seeking god because god will put an unction in your spirit especially when you have a relationship with with god you have a relationship he will put an unction in your spirit and he will drop somebody on your heart and he will tell you in so many ways go and be a blessing to them and it doesn't mean that you got to be out on social media with your camera and everything and look what i did and whatever the case may be no that's not the case you can go because this was what my papa used to do and i used to be a little kid on his hip if somebody was going through, he'd come home, he'd get ready for dinner. Grandma and I already, my grandma had already packed up some stuff in a brown paper bag. Good morning, is that Daji? Hey, good morning. Had packed up something, and she say, William, go and take this over to so-and-so's house. And Papa would go, and he would knock on that door, and he would slide that uh, food right there on their front porch or whatever. He didn't have to make a big scene. He didn't have to let anybody know that he was a blessing to somebody. And that's what God will tell you to do. Go ahead and put this in so-and-so's account. Or go ahead and da-da-da-da-da. Good morning, Cousin Kim. That's what God will drop on your heart. But ask yourself, are you doing it for God? are you doing it for self i know for me it's a thing called pride and i'm learning 
it's hard for me to ask anybody for anything. But if I was to ever ask, I got to consider what they going through. I got to consider that they got to feed their children. I don't care if they have no more children in the house. It's probably grandchildren that they taking care of. And a lot of people don't consider that. What people do nowadays is see what they can do to get and take from other people. Always want to take, take, take. You got the spirit to take, but you never want to bless somebody else. So I'm going to ask you this morning, cousin, auntie, a big mama, whoever you are, mama, daddy, would you consider and be proud the fact that you raised up your children in the way that they should go like the word of God said, and you have them standing on your own, their own two feet, but please do not use anybody like a personal ATM. Hey, Cassandra, please don't use anybody like a personal ATM because guess what? You don't know what's going on in somebody's household. You don't know if they barely making ends meet. You don't know if they made foolish decisions when it came to their money and they out here trying to be like the Joneses and ain't about vehicles and homes that they don't need and now they trying to work to get it back together you don't know if they trying to come out of debt i'm telling you right now the kings is trying to come out of debt because we are claiming in the name of jesus that we are going to be debt free so quit trying to see what you can get from somebody just because you see them looking nice and driving a nice vehicle they have worked hard and they have been faithful over the little that god has blessed them with and god has blessed them with much more god will do the same thing for you if you operate in god so I'm going to say this, instead of you going to everybody trying to make them your personal ATM machine and whatever the case may be, start operating in God. Try God. That's what the word of God says. Try God and see what he do for you when you are obedient. But what you need not to do is go around and you hustling. That's what it is. You hustling people. Oh, I think I can get $50 out of Cam and then I can get $100 out of Cherie. And uh -huh, by the time it's said and done, my, my trip is about to be paid. But you lying. If you ever got to lie to get something, that is not of God. And you cannot expect God to bless you. So this morning, I just wanted to share, leave married couples alone. It's hard enough. How many married folks we got on her? I just need you to say amen, 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 amen. It's hard enough when you are trying to be the two that become one, like the word of God says. But when you got somebody else who's trying to always take from you, they always looking at your finances. Oh, they stay in a nice house. Oh, they drive a nice car. Oh, look at the clothes she got on. Oh, look at how the husband got his wife looking because that's what a husband's supposed to do. Okay, but you thinking that you can just pick up the phone and they automatically supposed to become your personal ATM? Baby, the devil is a lie and God is nowhere up in that, okay? So you need to seek God. You need to do a Matthew 6 and 33. You seek him first. You keep God as a head of your house and you be faithful over the little that you got. Don't be out here misspending your funds. But then you go into somebody who's married because, well, both of them got a job. So, I mean, they should be able to help me. No, the devil is a lie. Now, on the flip side, my married folks, okay? I need you all to identify in your marriage. If you got nothing else out this video on this morning, identify in your marriage. Who's the strong person that'll say, hold on now, we need to think about this. And who's the one that'll give away the house? I told y'all, I would give away the whole house, the car, and everything. And God ain't bit more told me to do it. And then I'm sitting up here crying and snotting and wondering why we're struggling in our finances. Because it's not a bad thing. What you have to understand is start listening to your spouse. Because sometimes... The one spouse is always saying no. Sometimes the one who give away the house could say, baby, uh, okay, let's let's go to God in prayer. And you know, da-da-da-da-da. But guess what? My husband ain't never wanted to say no. But when he say no, no means no. And when I've always went against my husband, then I've always got a spiritual butt whooping. And that can come in any manifestation. You hear me? That can come in your body is ailing. That can come in you losing a job. It can come in all different shapes and forms. So what I've learned to do is when my man of God, my head of my house, when he said, boom, whatever it was, then that's what we doing. Enough said in the discussion and trust and believe. I'm a strong woman. Woman, okay, I'm an alpha female, but I've learned how to subject myself to leadership, the head of my household, okay? So I need you to identify who's the one that gives away the house, baby, and who's the one to say, hold on and hold your horses. And y'all need to realize that is not control amongst the both of you. It is balance, okay? That's how God has balanced you. I have never met a married couple where both of them give away the house. Uh-uh. I've never met a married couple where both of them is stingy. I've never met it. It's either one or the other. And you balance 
each other out like a seesaw. So that's not a bad thing. Learn how to operate in your balance in your marriage. Don't be sitting up here going behind your husband or your wife back and you slide $300 to this person and $1,000 to that person. And then when y'all fall on hard times, you ain't got nothing. And God ain't bit more told you to give it to nobody. But you said, and some of us even got the audacity to lie on God. Well, God put it on my heart. But if God put it on your heart and the two become one, God should also put it on your heart for you to check with your spouse before anything that y'all work together to do flows out of your household, okay? God do tell us to be a blessing, but notice I said God said be a blessing, not you trying to do it on your own and whatever, because guess what? The devil is cunning and he know how to use people in all forms to come between your marriage. And this is why husbands and wives start argue, arguing all the time and you fighting because when you get in a predicament where you need to do something, because see, God can see what's coming down the road because he, Jeremiah 29, 11, he know the plans that he has for us. So he can see what's coming down the road. We can't. And that's why it's important to use wisdom and balance in your marriage. So that way, when whatever trial come down the road, baby, you as husband and wife can attack together as one trust and believe me and my husband have been through this so many times and i used to get mad as a wife and say but baby i don't understand they need some da, 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 da. and he just be looking at me and i'm acting a whole fool y'all i'm being transparent with y'all because baby i had the mouth and the attitude you see what i'm saying until god showed me your husband is your balance, not your enemy. Some of y'all need to hear that on this morning. Your wife is your balance, not your enemy. So y'all need to learn how to work together as one, okay? So you can be a God unit. Join us tonight, Marriage Mondays with the King, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going live from our YouTube page from KRG and 98.5 FM as we're going to talk about the two become one divorce i know that's an oxymoron but we're gonna have special guests rochelle johnson and shirley latour and also my husband will be on the panel i'm going to be interviewing them on tonight and they are going to be talking about divorce okay so join us tonight our podcast will not be live we will be live on youtube we will upload everything on our podcast later so KRGN, type it in, go to Google. You can listen live from mykrgn.com or you can watch us and join in from Marriage Mondays with the King's YouTube channel. So I pray that you all have gotten off to an amazing day. I pray what was said on this morning can help heal marriages around the world. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join in with your girl, Shan. And know that I will be back next Monday if God says the same at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time to put, talk about whatever God God places on my heart. So if y'all are in a situation where you always got family members and people that you know, friends and stuff that's leeching, baby, go ahead and share this uh, message with them because your, your sister Shan, your auntie Shan, your cousin Shan will tell them, okay, what it is that they need to know. And husbands and wives, y'all learn how to walk in balance. Y'all learn how to be the two becoming one. I know it's not an easy thing, but it get easier when you work together. So y'all have a blessed day. Y'all have a blessed week. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Share this because it's free. Be a blessing to somebody today and not a curse. And your girl, Shan, will be back with you all tonight. For those of you who join us, Marriage Mondays with the Kings YouTube page as we speak on divorce. But for those of you who are not able, you can catch up on YouTube. However, join me back next Monday at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And always keep it locked on KRG and 98.5 FM. The Rock. God bless.